You are an adventurer, all alone, investigating an abandoned warehouse. It suddenly occurs to you that this might have been a foolish quest to take. Sure, you like the idea of making some quick cash, but as you creep through the shadows, you can't help but wish you had waited for a few more party members to join you in here. Your eye catches a glimpse of movement in the shadows. Reflexively, your muscles churn to action as a large goblinoid creature stalks towards you. Its padded feet make almost no noise, and you catch the glint of a large sword in its hand in the dim light. You are first level. You are in a fight with a bugbear. And to make matters worse, you are a cleric. Can you make all the right choices to survive? Let's find out together on the Crunch McDabble Show. <gasps> Welcome to the Crunch McDabble Show. Here is your host, the legendary Crunch McDabble. Welcome to the Crunch McDabble Show. I'm your host, Crunch McDabbles. This is the only show where we break down the Pathfinder 2nd Edition rules. First, let's have a look at this bugbear. It's a second level creature. It has a plus four strength. It has a beefy plus ten attack bonus. It is holding a bastard sword in two hands, ripping off attacks with a punishing d12 plus 4 damage. Its armor class is 17, and it has 34 hit points. Giddy up. And for our cleric, we made a traditional war priest cleric. We have a human ancestry, a scholar background, and cleric class. We set our abilities at plus 3 strength, plus 1 dexterity, plus one constitution, and plus four wisdom. We have 18 armor class. We have 18 hit points. We take toughness with our versatile heritage feat and healing hands with our ancestry feat. Our healing font is loaded with four heal spells and we add runic weapon and protection in our spell slots. For equipment, we purchase a longsword, a shield, and some chain mail. So how does that look? Where are you going, Mr. Bilbo? I'm going on an adventure. I'm going on an adventure. Okay. <clears throat> so now on to this fight. We're going to let the bugbear go first because we're not going to make this easy in any way. He spends his first action to stride up into melee and then he starts his assault. The first strike rips in 8.4 average damage and the second strike at minus five Smear is in another 4.7 average damage. That brings our cleric down from 18 hit points to 4.9 hit points. Ouch, that hurts. But now it's our turn, so what do we do? Now, our first reaction in this situation, and it's a good one, is to cast a two-action heal spell. We just got shellacked, and we want some of that big two-action healing. With Healing Hands, the two-action version of the spell gives us 13 0.5 hit points back of positive vitality damage or whatever it's called now. We do a double check to make sure that the bugbear doesn't have an attack of opportunity. It doesn't. Okay, at this point we're sitting pretty good because we're back to full health. So now we have one action left in the round. What do we do with it? We don't have any single action spells. We could raise our shield for some extra armor class, which would be really nice, but if we don't attack this bugbear, no one else will do it for us, so we have to attack. So we're going to make a single action strike. Now what we did there, making a two action heal and an attack in one round, is what I call the cleric's power zone. The power zone is an incredibly efficient use of three actions for the cleric. Let's have a look at it. First, the two action version of the heal spell adds that flat eight hit points per spell rank. That's a lot of automatic healing. A single action heal spell, it might be half the actions, but you aren't getting half the healing. In fact, it's actually closer to a third the healing. So the two action version of the spell, it's very efficient. Here is a comparison of healing from the different versions of the heal spell based on actions. In other words, 
This is the amount of average healing each of these spells gives divided by the number of actions it takes to cast them. You can see the two action heal is significantly more than all the others until you make a three action heal that targets five players. That is really something. Then on the other side of the power zone is a single action attack. It has no multiple attack penalty, so it too is incredibly efficient in terms of damage per action. When you put both of these together in a round, it's like you're squeezing the maximum possible output you can get out of three actions. It's like taking a juicy navel orange and squeezing every delicious drop into a glass of orange juice and then drinking it down. Why do I always talk about food? I don't know. We head back to the combat. We make our attack against the bugbear's armor class 17, and we deal him 4.1 points of average damage. Not a ton of damage there. And then our turn is over. It is the bugbear's turn again. This time there is no reason for him not to attack three times with that big sword. And he does just that. He slams in the 8.4 damage. His second strike slams in 4.7 damage. And this time, he slams in a third attack for another 2.1 damage. The end result is we are down to just 2.8 hit points this time. It's our turn again, and we go back to our power zone. We cast a two-action heal to get back 13.5 hit points, which brings us up to 16.3 hit points. Then we use our last action to attack for another 4.1 damage. It's the bugbear's turn. His three attacks drops us to 1.1 hit points. This is not looking good. Do you see what's happening? When the bugbear makes three attacks, he is dealing more damage than we are healing. So he is slowly wearing us down. In turn, we're not really dealing much damage to him. So you can see this is not going well. It's our turn again. We heal ourselves up to 14.6. We use our third action to attack and deal 4.1 damage. But then that's it. It's a bugbear's turn. He hits us once. He hits us twice. And then there it is. Lights out. Now, that was a pretty valiant effort. Honestly, to survive into the fourth round on our first try is pretty good. Now let's try and find out how we can get better. One of the problems we need to address is our low damage. If we only deal 4.1 damage per round against a monster with 34 hit points, our rounds to kill is more than eight rounds. A lot can go wrong in eight rounds, least of which is running out of heal spells. So how can we remedy this? Our cleric has the runic weapon spell, which is a great spell for increasing damage. It takes two actions to cast, but it will turn our longsword into a plus one striking longsword. That is a level four item. That means it will give us a plus one item bonus on attacks and it deals two weapon damage dice. Nice. Now, they improved Runic Weapon, uh, the spell in the remaster, to scale as you level. You can heighten this to spell rank 6 and spell rank 9. This allows the caster to get access to slightly higher level striking runes at a couple of levels. Basically, this spell used to be useful only at level 1 to 3, and now it's useful at level 1 to 3, level 11, and level 17 and 18. So it's slightly less useless than it was before, I guess. The reason I'm bitter about this is because it's so good at first level. It would have been nice if there was a spell that the cleric could use consistently to increase melee damage as they level. So let's see how this spell helps us out. Back to the warehouse. A bugbear jumps out of the shadows. It strides up to us. It makes two nasty strikes throttling us with his grim blade. It's our turn. We spend two actions casting Runic Weapon. Our longsword sizzles with magical energy. We have one action left over. We are low on hit points, so we're going to use that single action to cast a single action heal on ourselves. That gives us 5.5 .5 hit points back. And that was pretty good. That was a good round. Now we're ready for a fight. It's the bugbear's turn again. He makes three strikes against us, and he kills us dead. Well, that didn't go well. Let's consider what happened. In the previous combat, we cast a two-action heal. In this combat, we can only cast a one-action heal, and that didn't give us enough hit points to survive. But if we don't cast Runic Weapon, we have no way to win this fight. So how do we solve this problem? Well, using a single action to raise a shield would give us a little more survivability. 
Let's look at the numbers. The single action heal spell with healing hands heals 5.5 hit points, which is pretty good, especially with that one extra average healing from healing hands. But look at this. If we use a single action to raise a shield, we increase our armor class by plus two. A plus two to our armor class decreases incoming damage by 10 to 20% per attack. In this case, with the bugbear attacking three times, it brings the bugbear's damage from 15 on three attacks down to 11 damage on three attacks, which saves us four hit points. But we also use the shield block reaction to mitigate five damage as well. And that is great for this class because we weren't using that reaction for anything anyways. Now to figure out how this changes the average damage that we're gonna take, we can't just subtract five from the average damage coming in. Instead, we subtract five from the monster's average damage. That would be five from the 10.5 on a regular hit and five from the 21 on a crit. When we substitute those new damage numbers, the average damage goes from 6.3 down to 3.6, which saves us 2.8 more damage. So you can see, combining a single action to raise a shield and a reaction to shield block saves us 6.8 average damage on three attacks. That is a little more effective than the single action heal spell, even with the increased dive from healing hands. So that is pretty impressive and good news for shield users of all classes. So let's go back to our combat and see what happens if we use this approach. The bugbear jumps out of the shadows and slams us with two strikes. We cast Runic Weapon on our Longsword and raise our shield, which increases our armor class to 20, and our turn ends. It's the Bugbear's turn now, but he has to deal with our higher armor class. His first strike only deals 6.3 damage instead of 8.4 damage. On top of that, we use our Shield Block reaction to mitigate 5 points of incoming damage, which brings the damage down to 3.6 for that first attack. That is a really impressive decrease from 8.4 damage. But on the next strike, the bugbear manages to overpower us again. But we did do a little better this time. It seems like we just need a little bit more oomph to survive this onslaught. So what else can we do? It is time to get extreme, my friends. Let's get some more hit points. We already have the toughness general feat. What if we take our constitution and increase it as far as we can go? With our Ancestry, we take Strength and Constitution instead of Strength and Wisdom. Then we switch our background to Warrior, and we take Strength and Constitution there. Those two changes will give us a maxed out plus three starting Constitution, and then we still have a plus two Wisdom. Now, maybe this is a mistake, but I don't think a plus two Wisdom is that bad. Sure, we aren't going to be as good at Medicine and Religion checks. Sure, our Spell DC will be lower. Sure, we're going to have a harder time with counteract checks, but just look at that beefy con. That makes us much, much puffier and ready for this fight. It makes us much more like a D10 martial class, which is what we want to be. So let's see if this makes enough of a difference to be worthwhile. Whoa. We start the combat again. The bugbear jumps out of the shadows and slams us with two strikes. We cast runic weapon and raise our shield again. It's the bugbear's turn and he makes his three attacks. The first one comes in, and we're taking less damage because our shield is raised. Again, we shield block to mitigate five damage off that attack. The second attack comes in. We have a few more hit points, but it's just barely not enough. The bugbear overpowers us again, knocking us down to just minus 0.4. So, is it hopeless? Is our hero lost? Do we just give up? I say nay, good friends. I say nay. One thing we noticed is that extra armor class from having our shield raised really helps. But we don't have any actions to raise a shield every round because we need the big two action heal every round and we still need to attack. Now, that's not entirely true because we could raise our shield, make a single action attack, and a single action heal each round. This is sort of a modified power zone. These three actions combine to give you a close equivalent to a two action heal and it leaves an action left over to make your attack. And I like this because it makes use of our reaction each round. However, there is a problem with this. A basic steel shield only has 10 hit points before it's broken. 
So at most, we could do this maneuver for maybe two or three rounds, and that isn't going to work in this fight, although this approach might be reasonable when we get a sturdier shield. So the question is, is there anything else we can do right now to get more armor class? Well, I'll give you the solution, but it's going to require us to embrace some forbidden lore. So we're going to need to keep our voices down so we don't upset the polite folk. Here it is. Instead of using this general feat here for toughness, let's turn that general feat into heavy armor proficiency. Then we buy a suit of shiny splint mail at the cost of 13 gold pieces, so pretty much all our money. But look at this. That brings our armor class up to 19 and decreases our hit points down to 19 as well. So now we have our shield ready to use. We have as much constitution as we can get. We have some really burly heavy armor. I mean, we look amazing. We look incredibly tanky. I mean, we feel alive inside. So are you ready to go fight a bugbear? Are you ready to go fight a bugbear? I can't hear you. Are you ready to go fight a bugbear? Are you ready to go fight a bugbear? You investigate an abandoned warehouse. A bugbear skulks out of the shadow and slams you with two attacks. You can see that these attacks, now they're against an armor class 19, and we are taking less damage right off the bat, even right away on these first two attacks. Our turn begins. We use two actions to cast Runic Weapon and Magic Cascades to and fro along the blade of our sword. We use our third action to raise our shield to an unprecedented 21 armor class at first level. It's the bugbear's turn, and he savagely lashes out at us. The first strike comes in, but we use our shield block reaction and mitigate the damage down to 3.3. The second attack slams in another 3.2 damage. We are down to one hit point. We are swooning from the attacks. The third attack comes in. We brace for impact. This is a plus zero against our armor class of 21. That means that even a 20 on the die won't critically hit us. And the average damage, it's only 0.5 damage. We weeble, we wobble, but we don't fall down. We have 0.5 hit points. We consult the rules. We have more than zero hit points, so we are not knocked out. We start our turn. We spend two actions on our heal spell and heal back up 13.5 uh, up to 14. Then we rip off an attack at the bugbear, scalding him with 7.2 damage. You can see that the damage with the plus one striking longsword is almost double what we were dealing before. The bugbear hits us with three attacks again. We heal back up and hit him back. He hits us with three attacks again. We heal back up and we hit him back. But something is happening. The bugbear starts to notice that he is the one that is being overpowered this time. He can't out damage our two action heal when we have a 19 armor class. Our attacks keep slamming in and in the sixth round, we emerge victorious. Wow. Conclusions. We made four changes to make a beefy survivable war priest. We lowered our wisdom and increased our constitution. We took heavy armor proficiency to get one more point of armor class. We cast the runic weapon spell to get more weapon damage. And we used a single action to raise a shield and a shield block reaction to survive the first round. It is worth pointing out that it is impossible to buy splint mail, a steel shield, and a long sword with your starting gold pieces. You will be one gold piece short. I tried to add the Bargain Hunter skill feat, which would give us two extra starting gold. You could do this with the general feat or by taking the merchant background. However, there was nothing we could give up. If we gave up healing hands, if we gave up heavy armor, if we take the merchant background, it doesn't give us uh, a constitution boost or even switch over to a wooden shield. If we did any of those things, it would cause us to lose this fight. That's how thin a margin it is. But I mean, do you really want to dicker over one gold piece? Besides, you could be first level, but you managed to get some loot at this point. It's still a really cool accomplishment. I think the real winner here is the remastered change to the Cleric's Divine Font to not be dependent on Charisma. 
this might be the biggest improvement they made to the cleric in the remaster. It really helps the war priest in particular because they can put points in strength and even constitution and still have four heal spells from healing font at first level. And you can see how powerful those heal spells are to keep the cleric hanging around even against a really tough enemy. Final conclusion, how strong is the cleric class now? I don't think any other class could pull this off at first level, even a summoner. And maybe this is what I've been missing about the war priest all along. It's not about having the best attack bonus or the best defense. It's about having bunches of heal spells so you can completely mitigate what the monster is doing and wear them down. You aren't going to win every fight, but this is a really, really solid strategy. And that is it. I've been your host, Crunch McDevils. This has been the Crunch McDevils Show. Survive Galarian with a two-action heal every single round. It's just that juicy. There he is. Cue the music.